winter is coming. Hey guys, Randy Gage here with another episode of the Power Prosperity Podcast. And I turned on the laptop, so we will also put the video version of this on Prosperity TV, the YouTube channel. Uh, topic this episode is how to prosper in an economic meltdown. And this is kind of the podcast version of something I put up on the blog. Uh, for you guys who want to see the deep dive on it, uh, it's on my at randygage.com. This particular post is titled Warning Opportunity uh, Alert. Because as you've probably already figured out, I'm not here just to talk about how bad the economy is and what this meltdown looks like, but what the opportunities are in that, what it means from a prosperity context. Um, so the, the thing I wrote in the blog that I think is the foundation of this is that I think this is a one of event, like a once in your lifetime event. We can't call it a black swan event because I think it was entirely predictable with all the trillions of dollars, like here in the US, the trillions of dollars of uh, relief programs that they did, which they didn't have the money for. It was just printing press money, borrowed money. So of course the bill has to come due at some point. Of course it has to cause inflation at some point. So it's not like this is some surprise ending that nobody could have foreseen. Of course we're in an economic meltdown. But here's why I think it's a, a one of scenario. Look at these factors, these elements that are happening right now. We have this worldwide pandemic still going on, lockdowns two years in. Just the other day, uh, Shanghai went into another lockdown. Irresponsible governments with massive deficit spending, trillions of dollars spent on relief programs. We have a whole generation of children developing who are emotionally traumatized by the lockdowns and having to wear masks and missing school. Um, I was talking to a teacher the other day who said her third graders are really first graders. But, you know, this new school year, she's like, well, the third graders we have coming in, they're actually first graders. That's how stunted their development is. Um, we have the investment and monetary scene, uh, you know, just totally dis disrupted by scammy NFT projects, scammy cryptocurrency product projects. We've got a land war happening in Europe. We have all these countries who've done sanctions against Russia for the invasion. But of course, those sanctions hurt the people doing them as well. We have millions of day traders now with uh, uh, apps that they can plunge their lungs out, buying these ridiculous uh, shit coins and sketchy NFTs. Um, we have social media platforms which accelerate the spread of harmful mind viruses. And then we have this media business model, which is now devolved to the a clickbait model, um, which operates by creating fear and outrage. So we had, um, you know, the the horrible flu epidemic, you know, a hundred years ago, whenever that was. But we've had depressions before. We've had recessions before. We've had wars before. But we haven't had all of these things at one time with the new scenario of cryptocurrencies, NFTs, trading apps, Robinhood, all these day traders, all this social media influence, and this new clickbait model of the media. And I'm saying they're all coming together to create this perfect storm of chaos, which is happening in the world right now. And I'm recording this in June of 2022. And I think we're just beginning to see the effects of this meltdown and they're gonna get much, much worse. But of course, if you've read any of my work, uh, my books, you know, I really believe with every uh, calamity, every disaster, every tragedy contains the seeds 
of a corresponding or greater opportunity. And uh, I believe this is one of those scenarios. So I've got one, two, three, I've got six suggestions for how you can prosper in times like these. Number one is one we've talked about many times, demolish your debt. Uh, one of the shrewdest moves you could do right now isn't, I know you're saying, well, Bitcoin is down to this much, should I buy some more? This stock is down to this much, maybe I should get more. This opportunity, if you're in debt, the best thing you could do right now is get rid of that debt. Um, the second thing I titled boring is the new sexy in the blog, meaning just get back to some of the basis, you know, the, the, the basic stuff of how do we know money is made? We know that it comes from solving problems, adding value. So I know the trendy thing is to look for the 100x opportunity or the stock that's going to 1000x. So let's find some hot tech stock that's going to become the next unicorn. But I'm just saying, if your sister-in-law has a restaurant in a neighborhood and she's got really good food, she's got a solid crew, it's well managed, she's figured out how to use Grubhub and Uber Eats and all the delivery apps, and she's got a solid bit, that may be a good investment. And no, you're not going to make a thousand X, but um, get back to the basics. If you see a business offering true value, it's probably a good investment. Number three, dial down dumb. <laughs> what do I mean by this? This is not the time to buy status signaling items, uh, more jewelry, cars, or a too big house to impress other people. Those are always stupid moves, but they're really foolish when we're in an economy like we are right now. Number four is rejoin the physical realm. And by this, I'm just saying, um, you probably need to take a step back from the digital space. And by this, I mean cryptocurrencies and NFTs. Um, now, full disclosure, I have, and I really sketch it out in the blog completely, but I own cryptocurrency, um, and I, uh, but I don't own any NFTs, right? And I've done very well in Bitcoin. I bought Bitcoin when it was $40, okay? So I did, and I didn't buy one or two. I bought a lot, okay? So I did great, and I held it to a good price before I sold it. And recently I got back in on that. And I will say, um, God, I, you know, I don't like to get into my finances. I like to keep it private. Um, but I would just say, you know, I, I own some Bitcoin and ETH. I own less than 10 of each. Um, and I bought a few more um, a couple of days ago when I put up this post about, when I put up a new post I did about cryptocurrencies. Um, I don't, I, what, I, what I wrote in the blog and what I want you to know when I say kind of, you might want to back off is they're really risky right now because there's so much garbage in the space. There's literally thousands of shit coins out there that claiming to be the next Bitcoin. Um, you got crypto MLMs, which is a joke. There's no any direct selling company that the product is a token or a coin um, or, it, or the product is you get to buy and sell tokens and coins. It's a pyramid. It's a scam. It's a joke. There's so much of that crap in the space that they're very volatile. And NFTs at this point, you know, what we have to say about cryptos is, and by the way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a follow-up podcast just on cryptocurrencies and NFTs, or I'll do two, one on each. Um, and I did a follow-up blog and you can, you know, go to randygage.com and look, you can see the blog I wrote specifically. Uh, uh, the title is Losing My Religion for Bitcoin, if you want to look at that. 
Um, so while I own those, I just feel like, you know, they're very uh, vulnerable right now. Uh, all, crypt, all currency is just a mind virus. The US dollar is a mind virus. The Japanese yen is a mind virus, right? These are just concepts that man has, humankind has created because it's a lot easier than saying, um, you know, I want uh, a bag of Cheetos. I have two pens. Can I trade you the two pens? You give me the bag of Cheetos or I'd like a massage. I have some mangoes from the tree in my backyard. Uh, how many mangoes do you want for a massage? It's very inconvenient, right? So we invent money, we invent currency, but it only works if everybody agrees to it. So the idea of a cryptocurrency like Bit Bitcoin is that we all accept it as a viable currency. And in this case, we do so because we say it's backed by math. It's backed by programming. There is a blockchain and it can't be hacked. It's public transparency. We know every transaction, everything's in the ledger. It can be checked. Um, sounds good, looks good, looks good on paper. That's why I own some Bitcoin. But if you think it's, private it's not if you think it can't be hacked that's not true if you think it never could be affected by an electromagnetic pulse attack of some kind i don't believe that i think it could so it's not a zero percent chance that it could never be hacked um and right now nobody's using it as currencies right now it's just it's more erratic than you know it's the idea of bitcoin and what many of these other coins have promised is that they would be a hedge against inflation and a hedge against the ups and downs of fiat currencies and the truth is up to this point that hasn't happened the you know inflation goes up bitcoin goes down stock market goes down bitcoin follows it economic meltdown Bitcoin meltdown. It hasn't been a hedge against those things. It hasn't been a store of value. So all I'm saying is up to this point, the cryptocurrencies have not delivered on the benefits that we want them to have. Um, the big ones that were promised, you know, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash that didn't rely on trust. I would submit that right now you need more trust to do transactions in Bitcoin, then you need trust to do regular transactions in fiat currencies. Because at least with fiat currencies, there's some pretense of value generation, you know, guarantees by the government issuing them. And there are some kind of laws that regulate the trading in them, in like stocks and bonds and things like that, other things that are don't exist for cryptocurrencies. Um, so I still think hey, this could be really valuable one day. Um, but they're a really small part of my portfolio. And if you read my blog, you'll see I list exactly how I do my own personal investments and how I view them. And as far as NFTs, this is, you know, the, the future for smart contracts built on a blockchain like this level on Ethereum this is the future. This is going to provide so much good to the world. But if we talk about NFT collectibles right now, this top shot crap from the NBA and the stuff some of these brands are doing. And if you're like me, if you're a social media influencer and you got 150,000 followers on your Instagram or Twitter or something, you're you got people every week. Hey, we're going to make, you can make an NFT. We'll run the project for you. And, you know, take this dope book and create a drawing of an armadillo and we're going to sell a thousand of them limited. You know, it's like, there's so much crap out there. I honestly believe in the NFT space right now, somewhere between 99.7% and 100%, somewhere in the middle, all are the only legitimate ones. And the rest are just worthless. That 97 point whatever percent and up to all of them are going to end up being worthless. And I mean, I, you talk to me all day long about your crypto punks and the board Ape Yacht Club and 
I'm just telling you the, uh, the sketches I do in my notebook of the amorous aardvark have just as much value as some of the crap people are paying $400,000 for right now. So I'm just not buying it. Again, future, so, but just remember, the digital currency space, the blockchain space, um, we're trying to create kind of a financial utopia of sorts, and that's gonna take decades, not days, not months, not even years, decades. So if you are investing in the digital stuff, it should be for your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren. But it shouldn't be that you're trying to use that to live on right now. And I don't like you taking a big percentage of your retirement portfolio and putting in that right now. Again, that'll change. I expect that the future of this stuff would develop. But for now, in this economic meltdown, uh, if money is tight, if you don't have a lot of disposable income, stay out of the digital space. If you're Bobby Axelrod, you got a multi-billion dollar hedge fund, uh, and you want to put 100 million in Bitcoin, great, go for it. If you're a really savvy investor, you know what you're doing, you have disposable income, you've created some financial security for yourself, and you want to invest in some of these digital assets, great. But for the average person who wouldn't know how to read a white paper to know if it was a scam or legitimate, which is 99.9999999% of the people in the world, right now is not the time to do that if you don't have disposable income. Number five, kind of related to the fourth one, diversify both your assets and your risk level. Right? Don't have all your assets in one currency. Right, I have a lot of stuff in US dollar based assets, but I don't have confidence in the US dollar. The US economy is a shambles right now. Um, a few years ago, we had a $9 trillion deficit. Now we've got like a $30 trillion deficit. The US dollar is a pyramid scheme. Let's just be honest. The Euro is a pyramid scheme. The Japanese yen is a pyramid scheme, right? So don't put it all in one currency. Don't put it all in one country. Hey, look at these uh, oligarchs in Russia right now, worth, you know, six months ago, they were worth $30 billion. Now their yachts have been auctioned. They, their jets have been impounded at airports. They can't leave the country. They can't fly out of Russia. They can't fly to Russia if they're out of there. You know what I mean? They can't access their money. Every, you know, they're worth 30 billion now, they're worth a tenth of that, right? Um, and don't worry, they'll get by, right? On 3 billion, you could still scrimp by. But the point is, if they just have all their assets in uh, Russian, what is it, ruble? Can't even remember. Um, it's not a good place to be, not any country, one thing. Um, put 50% of your portfolio in, and by the way, uh, disclaimer, I'm not an investment advisor. I'm not a financial planner. I'm not a licensed security trader or dealer. I'm a high school dropout who has no credentials in the investment area. I'm just a guy who used to wash dishes, who became wealthy with street smart uh, common sense. Okay, street smart operating. So I'm just telling you what I do personally. Um, I don't claim to be any investment expert. So don't take anything I say as that. This is just me sharing my thoughts on how you manifest prosperity in difficult economic times. Um, a time like this, maybe put 50% of your portfolio in this low risk, low reward stuff. Um, certificates of deposit, certain municipal bonds, maybe 30% in moderate risk, moderate, moderate reward stuff, and maybe 20% into the high flyer stuff that you think is going to really pay off good, big, in a big way. You know, the 100x stuff, the 1000x stuff. Um, just don't get seduced into when it does really well to take it 
take all your money out of the medium risk and low risk stuff and put it all in the high risk stuff because that's when you could lose everything. Um, don't just chase the unicorns. You know, you're going to end up like Dogecoin or Luna. All right, number six, most, más importante, take charge of your own prosperity. Governments, even the well-meaning ones, are inherently corrupt and mismanaged. They never create prosperity. Let me repeat that. Governments never create prosperity. At best, they can facilitate it. More often, they squander it, obstruct it, or destroy it. So don't outsource your prosperity to anyone, especially governments. Take charge of your own prosperity by developing your prosperity consciousness, a mindset, a mindset driven by abundance, not lack. Not the fear of loss mindset that most people have, but the mindset of possibilities. And remember, every challenge presents a corresponding opportunity, but they're often uh, disguised or hidden. So dial down the social media crap right now, dial down the mainstream media stuff, go back to the foundation of abundance. All true prosperity is created by solving problems, adding value, envisioning superior possibilities. That's what I want you to focus on. And again, I'll do a follow-up podcast on the crypto stuff. But in the meantime, you go to the blog at randygage.com. You can get the, uh, this, the, the written version of this and the updated crypto one. Please rate and share the podcast. If you're listening, subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, please like it. Love to see your comments. I do read all of the comments and um, subscribe to the channel. So remember, next episode coming up, Bitcoin, crypto, and NFTs. And in the meantime, remember, winter is coming. But winter is always followed by spring. Peace.